We've got some hey, fresh new I'm Luis. Talent and I'm Luis. You and you're listening before. to the Content One, is Profit two, Podcast. Listen. We are in for a treat. Today, we have an incredible guest who we met by none other than the one and only Amanda Holmes. We met today's guest at the last Fun Hiking Live and check this out. We had our red pass together. Let's go. That's right. And that's Venezuelan food for those that don't know. We're going to have to to get some arepas together. And we do a, li a live stream together. And eating eating arepas? It, no, <laughs> or cooking arepas. Cooking arepas. That's pretty good. <laughs> Guys, today's guest is an expert strategist in commercial video marketing and brand development. Let's just name drop some of the people and companies he has worked with. Tony Robbins, Brandon Burchard, Serena Williams, Ooh. Adobe Canon, say no more. Yeah, total badass. He's also the host of his own podcast that's about to hit the 100th episode club. He's also a published author, but most importantly, he's an incredible father of two wonderful daughters. That's right. Please welcome world-renowned Glycam operator, host of the Sebulon Thomas podcast, the one and only Sebulon Thomas! <laughs> oh, look at how the light came on and everything. I love it. I love it. It's oh, great. Man, dude. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Thank you for handing hanging out with our craziness. <laughs> first of all, I know. I'm I'm surprised you're still here. I'm, gra I'm grateful. <laughs> it's like, yeah, let's go. And then there's nobody behind the screen. There we go. Well, I'm loving I'm loving the green room. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Dude, I just realized I for I forgot the surprise. Sebulon, <laughs> I, I had a surprise for you for the intro. Yeah. Look at this. I, look at this. Yeah, for if, those yeah. for those listening, you need to come watch the video. But I was gonna be like Sebulon Thomas and bring out my like, hey, yes. like, like, let's go. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. but oh, I, I love it. <laughs> There's that funny story about that that this little uh contraption here. But uh Sebulon, thank you so much for, for coming on. I mean, we connected in this live event. We were fortunate enough to to share dinner with you, man. It was so cool to share stories and, and have that conversation. Obviously, we're super honored. But for those that might not be familiar with you with what you do, can you share a little bit of like your story, like uh, you know, from maybe the the your beginnings, right? On in this like video world, in this content world. Uh, <laughs> And we'll go from there. Yeah, I'd love to. So first of all, thank you for having me on the show. You guys are amazing. And I did enjoy the food we have. We'll talk about that too. So yeah. um, I got my my whole career jump started um, really in 2016. But I started at like a lot of people don't know the hustle. They don't know the grind. They don't know how hard it takes to get to some places. And, and that story right there is important because a lot of people see some of the stuff I've done and like they're inspired and that's great, but they go, Oh, I'm just going to go do that. And that's cool. But when it doesn't work out, don't stop, you know? So, I mean, there's many, many years I worked and I didn't, I didn't know I was getting anywhere, but it's, it's all that effort that you think you're trying to move that mountain. Right. And it doesn't like you're going to move. It doesn't look like you're moving the mountain, but then you do. Right. So, I started out with uh, a simple phone call. I had a satellite radio show. This is back in 2011. And uh, someone gave me the opportunity to speak as a, as a life coach, as a motivational speaker on a satellite radio show. And then they gave me the opportunity to introduce people. So I was doing all this stuff. And my, my father actually mentioned, hey, you should get this guy, Devin Supertramp, on your show. Like, it'd be really cool. I'd see his videos. He's geeking out. He's always telling me about his videos. I'm like, all right, dad, you know. And I'm watching this guy's videos. I'm like, holy cow, like, this is really cool. So then um, I get Devin Supertramp on the show. And this is when he was filming the Far Cry video uh, in Hawaii, Ooh, right? Yes, so yes. he's on the show. And during the show, I was like, wait a minute, you do YouTube videos? Like you do this, you do that. I was like, oh my gosh, I want to do that. Like, I want to do that. And he just gave me some really great pointers and uh, opened the door a little bit for me for some, some things I was working on. And Within a year's time, I was already on YouTube creating content. I was just going at it. I was having so much fun. And what really built my whole platform up on YouTube, I don't have a big following still to this day on YouTube, but um, things happen in the background. Sometimes things happen backwards, mm -hmm. right? Like you want the big following. For me, the big following was a slow grind, but it was enough to excite the big corporations and the big brands to go, we want what this guy's doing. And they saw what, what I'm doing and they realized, hey, if we can just get him to work with us at this stage we will be able to work with without without breaking the bank. And so that's what it did. I got a break with Mountain Dew. I got a break with, you know, even just like Metro Parks, Cleveland Metro Parks and all these places around my area. Uh, and I just started just dousing them with massive value, 
Of course, I get all that. This whole strategy of what I've built over the past years, how I built my entire career was basically based off of the Dream 100, Chet Holmes, and yes. learning his his philosophies. And it, I, I took it in a different world. I took everything I learned, even from like all the different people, the Tony Robbins, all these different people. And I said, how can I apply that in video production advertisement? And, um, and I started doing that and doing the brand videos. But when I started to see like local commercials, like what you see on television and then before the YouTube, because remember this is as YouTube was evolving. So yeah. you know, this is, this mm -hmm. is when the, the, you know, we didn't have a lot of opportunity to skip the ad. Like it was still new. So when they started to do this, I remember I was sitting in my living room and uh, you know, I'm excited because I'm doing all these YouTube videos. I'm not making any money at this point. You know, I'm just still like broke, you know, <laughs> like, wow. Like my wife is the breadwinner. I'm like, I'm just trying to, you know, what were you I'm doing at the, Sorry to cut you off, but what were you yeah. doing at the time? I'm very interested, right? Because a lot of people are like either all or nothing, like yeah. uh, either like we're all in the business and some of that, like, okay, how do you, how, what were you doing are at the same so, time to, yeah. to do, to chase your dream, right? Yeah, exactly. So I basically to just kind of going back a little bit is, you know, I, I, you know, if someone's starting out, you maybe you don't have a camera, right? So I didn't have a camera, a microphone. I didn't even know how to use a DSLR. I didn't have a glide cam, right? So what I did is I sold a music video to a local band, an Irish band. They wanted to do this cool music video. And I sold them. I was like, I can do your video. It's going to be amazing because I had a vision and I'm mm -hmm. determined to meet that goal. So I said, I just need to get paid two weeks in advance, right? <laughs> so they did that. And I spent all the money on all the cameras and the cameras and everything glide cam showed up like literally three days before the shoot. And I was like, all right, now I have to figure out how to do this. How do I use this, right? Yes. So, you know, Devin gave me settings to put in my camera. I was like, okay, that's going to be sweet. Uh, and then I show up and I did it. I pulled it off. And then they paid for another wow. music video, which slingshotted me into being able to do more YouTube stuff. So wow. in the process of growing this, I basically just went out there on YouTube and I said, I would show like, this is part of the dream 100 strategy. Like I would show up to companies and I would say like a local business and I'd like, they had a big fun center or something or like uh Kalahari resorts. Right. I'd, I'd show up and be like, I want to do a crazy video with you. It's going to be amazing. And they'd be like, we're not going to pay you. We don't have a budget for that. I'm like, it's fine. You don't have to like, let me just come in and do this. Let me, cause I'm building content for my channel. So I was yeah, like, let yeah. me, let me get, you know, let me put you on my YouTube channel. And this is before a lot of companies were really on YouTube. So I yeah. just started going one after another doing that. And what that did was, is they would share it and then I would share it. And then the people that I would meet at the event, I would shake their hand. How you doing? Hey, subscribe to my channel. So my first thousand subscribers, I personally met, right? Yes. And, That's awesome. Right? So they, they felt like they were a part of that. And then they would share it. So then I had this whole organic thing of like sharing and stuff like that. Um, and then obviously, you know, getting into how you shot those videos. But again, going back to like, I was sitting, this is, you know, from 2011 yeah. to 2015, I'm not making mm. any money, but I'm doing this. I'm getting traction on YouTube. I'm being booked like Mountain Dew invested in me. That was, that was good yeah. at the time. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I had no connection with Glycam. I just shot with their Glycam and I would like, I had no connection. I didn't even like really promote Glycam at all. I was just doing my thing. Yeah. So two, 2015, I'm sitting there and I'm watching a, a video before this, like one minute video that I want to watch. And it was a 15 minute Red Bull commercial. And I, I watched the whole thing. I didn't skip. And that's when I had the idea. I said, man, if every commercial video I do was awesome, if they were more exciting and more energetic like this, we wouldn't skip the ad. We would share that video. And that's when I was like, all right, I'm tired of these cheesy commercials that are out there that I'm seeing. Like we got to step the game up and maybe I can excite that. I'm not the guy at the time, but maybe I can excite that. And so yeah. I started just creating commercials and I, I went in my clients and said, I need hundred percent creative control. I'm, you know, I'm going to just get crazy. And, I, and all I know is the risk, right? I'm just going to risk it. Right. And so, you know, I walk into a pizza shop. I did a pizza shop video and I said, I love your pizza. Can I do a video here? And the guy's like, oh yeah. I don't, again, the whole thing, I don't have the money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Said, Immediately. No, no, let's in, yeah. I was like, let's invite some people and uh, can we mess this place up? I'll clean it up. And if I wreck anything, I'll pay for it. You know, I'm praying that it didn't happen. Right. So we invited <laughs> all the locals and I invited like, key people in the town to come in like certain like people that were like known and um we did this pizza shop video and we like destroyed the place with a food fight right but it was so <laughs> yeah it was so awesome that not only did he get business and he launched a franchise and still used that video to carry on that was like his main video but like wow. months later this like cities came to me like cleveland and medina county and like different areas like came to me and said can you build us a, a, a city video like uh, an attraction video to come to our place. Yeah. And it was funny. I was like, Oh, how did you hear about me? And they go, well, at this board meeting, I guess this big board meeting, they all got together and they were like, 
one person was like, I like this video. We should get the guy who did this video. And someone else was like, you should get the person that did this video. And then one guy stood up and goes, they're all by the same person. I'm like, they were all mine. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Dude. So, hold on. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that, you get the studio clap. Just say it's like, yeah. total badass. Hashtag, hashtag table face. You know, yeah. uh, I mean, we'll tell you what that means after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So there you go. I mean, like, it's about the grind. It's about don't get caught up in how it's supposed to look. Don't get caught up in what you're doing. And this right here, I'm speaking to the videographers. I'm speaking to the content yep. creators. The, the company approach is going to be a lot different, right? Mm -hmm. But it's it's really going to be, you know, focus on what it is that you want to add massive value to and be creative in it. And don't be afraid to fail yeah. because eyes are watching you and they're going to see you and they're going to want a piece of that when you get on their radar. And like for me getting on the radar, I got on Glycam's radar in 2018, didn't even know it. Funny story, just real quick, because I know we're going to move on things, but I, I I called on to Glidecam and I go, I, I was like the, I, it was like the customer service. I said, Hey, uh, I would like to see if you guys sponsor people. And she was like, well, let me put you through, but we don't really sponsor anybody. I'm like, Oh, okay. So I was just like kind of bummed. Right. But I was like, no, I have to get on the Glycam's radar. Like, what is that? And then I got a, a phone call and it was from the, um, a VP of sales and marketing. And I was like, what? And he's like, we've been trying to get a hold of you for a while. And I'm like, really? So it was like oh. months they were trying to get a hold of me. And I didn't know. And they're like, we don't sponsor, but we want to, we want to nominate you as a Glycam master operator. And that was cool. one of the top three. Then it was, it was Devin Graham, Chad and me. And so like, if you look on glycam.com, yeah. you'll see yeah. under masteries. So it was like, whoa. And then again, it was like, okay, you get these titles. Yeah. What do you do with it? What are you going to yeah. do with the title? You know? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I love it. So be, good. Be, be, Continue, before, please. Yeah. Before yeah, yeah, we fun, move on. Yeah. Fuzzy. Fuzzy has a, uh, uh, a good question. I'm going to turn this light off, first of all, because the, <laughs> the strobe, the party light, is it's a little, yeah, it's but, a little too intense right so now. For, for those listening, guys, by the way, uh, the, you know, they haven't sent us the, the, the lights yet. So, you know, so, well, this is the story behind the, the light. Like the, the little contact thing doesn't really work with the battery. Like it got stuck. And we've just been lazy. We, we yeah. haven't really ordered a new, uh, a new, a new uh, light. Aperture, if you're listening to this, uh, we need to be Aperture we Master Operators. Yeah. You know, we pretty much, we use this every single week. So please, we yeah. need some, some, so, you know, yeah. some, some new over. stuff. Send over. Uh, <laughs> dude, several, and I, I love your story. Uh, all of it, I, I think it's absolutely amazing. And I have so, so many questions, right? Honestly, one of my first questions is... <laughs> And this is like just totally selfish, right? Because I used to do video for like events and companies like that, like very freelancing, right? Again, I would take, I feel bad because it's actually not a Glycam. I, I tricked you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I use that. I, <laughs> Was I, it steady? I, I use a cheap knockoff. Uh, <laughs> no, it's called the Flycam. Um, we got to get you a, we got to get you a Glycam. I'll take care of that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, but you know, I used to go with my, I'm going to call it Glycam just because <laughs> it, it, that, the that, that's a category <laughs> king, category, the category king, right? So yeah. I used to go with my Glycam and my DSLR, right? And I would show up and record these videos and it was a lot of fun, but honestly, I feel like a lot of, especially creators that are selling uh, media to other companies, they struggle a lot with this is pricing dude yeah i would charge like 500 bucks for like this video there was like a let's say a two three minute video that like it was good at least in my very subjective opinion right <laughs> but i i mean the people will tell me that it was good right and and i never thought like every time i would find myself working on the video i was like i love it i know i'm delivering a lot of value but man this is not enough like i'm not charging enough but i never either got the confidence i never knew exactly how much to charge like pricing creative projects <clears throat> is a challenge right i mean yeah i, I don't know if it's like yeah. a mental block but there's like there's not a guide for that right and there, right. if you look into places prices are all over the place there's people that charge five six figures right for i mean um the other day i saw this video it's a one minute commercial ad <laughs> it's a it's a hundred thousand dollars deal for yeah. a one minute commercial ad and i'm like dude and i was here charging like 500 bucks for like a two minute video well right? i mean ima imagine you film for the super bowl i can only i i can tell you but well we won't we won't do that <laughs> but it, it's, up there. Yeah. It's, it's insane so for so, so for okay. those like yeah 
yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess the question where we want to go there is like, okay, for creative work like that, right? Like what would be like a good framework? Like, uh, mm -hmm. what are, or maybe what are some of the challenges that you had to go through and be like, okay, maybe people can, can learn from this. Yeah. So I, I, I did struggle with that at the beginning. Cause I was like, Ooh, cause here's the thing. You never want to like, you want to get out of the, the whole aspect of going to a client and going, um, how much do you, do you have, you know, like, like, it's not yeah, what you want to do. Exactly. Like you got to set your price. You got to stick to your price and you got to remind yourself, where are you at in this career you're creating, right? If you're mm -hmm. at the very beginning, you need to be very lenient. You need to be very adaptable. You need to go out there and just do what you do best. Right? So my recommendation at the very beginning is it's, it's, if you work your butt off really, really hard, you can accelerate this fast. Right. And just never give up because like I was at a point where I was almost going to give up. Like literally part of that story I was telling you about before I really went into it was the turning point was I almost had my stuff on eBay. Like I was going to sell everything on eBay cause it wasn't working. And you know, my family members are like, all you do is play with YouTube. Like, come on, man, get a real job. And I'm like, I'm destined for bigger. I know I can do this. I'm really good at this. I self-taught everything and yeah. just know at the time, nobody was, you know, picking it up. And the reason is technology changes the game. So, you know, if I had these tools a, a lot of uh, many, many years ago, I'd be like, oh, yeah, it'd be great. But technology wasn't there. The society shifts and the market shifts. You got to understand what's going on in the market to where you can add value. So if you can understand what's going on in the market and whatever you're filming, you go out there and add yeah. massive value. They will write the check for you. Right. So like if I go out there and I say, hey, guys, we're going to create this video and I'm not going to charge you anything up front. Right. I want to get my name out there. But if I do it right and I say, I need to know the numbers, I want to see what you're trying to get. If I could generate you like five or 10 times the investment that you would have made on me or what you're currently doing, then it's a no brainer. You're going to come back and want more. So that's what I did is I went out there and added massive value in a creative way and it did stuff. It made traction. No one's going to buy for something that doesn't move. So if you do something for like for what I did, it, it generated so much money for so many small businesses that. I didn't even get opportunity to go and pitch myself because everybody was like, this is the guy, this is the guy, this is the guy. And they came to me and I actually had to turn away business. And now listen, I had people coming at me throwing checks. And at the beginning, it was like 1500 here and there. And I was like, oh, that's great. You know, but when I started to realize what value I'm getting them, someone's paying me 1500 and making $200,000 off of something like that. I'm like, okay, well, I need to change my game a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So you got to just add the value. And, and it is hard. Like, you know, you have different stages of this, but what it comes down to is, is you have to find out where, where you want to go in the market. Like what business clientele do you want? Is it B2C, yeah. B2B? Are you doing your own thing? And then you go out there and just add value to them. So what it does, you have to learn to play a long-term game. It's not a short-term game, right? It's a long-term mm -hmm. game. And that is, you know, I mean, for the first three years, I shot on a, a Canon Rebel T3i. Like I was, I, and I was cashing $10,000 checks at that point, still on a Rebel T3i. No one was saying anything about quality because the videos yeah. I was doing. And I was like, yeah. why yeah. haven't I bought a camera yet? Right. You yeah. know, cause I'm over here waiting for the sponsorship or I'm trying to, you know, trying to involve <laughs> my own life, trying to catch up, you know? So yeah. really what it comes down to is just add massive value, play the long-term game and don't give up because like I said, my stuff was on eBay and I did a video that didn't work for this. Like I felt it didn't work. Like I was like, I don't, we shot this three minute video. I love these three minute videos. And he kept coming back going, dude. Cause I was like, let me do another shoot. Let me do it. It's just the lighting's not right. Like, and I usually didn't ever had that problem, but it was, yeah. it was a, it was something that needed to happen because when he says, just give me a 30 second video, maybe two, I was like, dude, 30 seconds. And I was like, I was upset. I was like, I already highlight this thing so good in three minutes. So I was forced to take the best of the best, cut a lot of it out and put it in 30 seconds. And I gave it to him and like, here you go. Like I was, you know, there's my passion kind of like whatever. Right. Like I, I love this so much that someone wanted something really chintzy. And I was like, all right. Well, then he called me back a week later. He goes, that video did so well for my business. My, my, my restaurant is packed. And, and he said, can I share you with people? And that was the moment where I pulled everything off eBay and I go, I got something here. And I went right yeah. into infomercials. So pricing really just add the value and play long-term game and don't worry about it. Now, if you're trying to feed yourself, there's steps to it. There's a game to it. It's link up with brands, sponsorships. Don't go after the big fish. You go after big fish, you're going to come home hungry a lot. Right. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. I've done that. I went after like, Oh, I got to make $5,000. Yeah. yeah. Right. But, if, but I, but I can make, I made 30,000 on $1,500 checks. Right. Yeah. And I made that in less than three weeks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and when I, I did it. that, I was, I was so excited. I told my wife, I said, I'm retiring you. We made 30 grand. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I, we did though. I, we did that. I said, you don't have to work anymore. And, um, and then all of a sudden one day I was like, what am I doing? Like, 
really 30 grand? Like I made your salary, but still that's not yeah. enough. Luckily yeah. enough, it worked out. She still that's hasn't awesome. had to work. <laughs> yeah. That, you, awesome. you realize how, yeah. How, what a one time, a big amount of money, you know, for you <laughs> might've been it, like when you actually get it, it's like, oh, maybe it's not that much. <laughs> maybe I need to work a little harder, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, before you go to the really smart question, I want to do a highlight here. Uh, you mentioned something about your experience with that community video that sometimes we get so attached like to our own thing, right? And then maybe in, in front of the client's eyes, like it's still like a lot of value. Maybe it's not really what they want to. like. And, and it's like, I, I was listening to a podcast on the way here and it's like, number one rule, on copywriting, for example, right? And uh, it's 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 not about you; it's all about them, right? And it's funny because we had a we had a, a meeting with our own team the other day, and we we do these these uh, pieces of content for for people and the guests and all the stuff that, that around our our system, and we're discussing headlines and different things and for the clients, right? And ever since we started this service, we've received zero feedback on headlines, right? By the way, like zero, we, we're very proud of that. And uh, nice. we're like, this is incredible. So at a point in the in the conversation, we're like, guys, why are we discussing? Why are we talking? Why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about improving the headlines when the feedback from the customers for over a year is zero? Like, this is yeah. like, there's no reason why we should be discussing this. Yes, we should be improving and learning more and, and see how we can better ourselves. But in front of the eyes of our customer is perfect, right? And, mm -hmm. and we never, and so I think that's a very good point, which, you know, it, with your 30 second video, right? And it comes out, what is it, right? I, I started exploring ourselves. Is it ego? Uh, what, what is this element that is not allowing me to do that? And then once we understood that, we're like, ah, oh, okay, a piece for ourselves, right? And they're like, okay, let, let, let the market test you know, tell you what it is. And it's the same yeah. thing with sales. Let, let me and add business. to that too. <clears throat> yeah. Let me, so a couple things you said there, the first thing is like, you know, like, uh, to, to make the vision of the client, don't ever go to a client to do a video. If you haven't thoroughly did your research, that's dream 100 for sure. Right. Like, and that's <laughs> yeah, my philosophy yeah. too. It's like, like if I'm walking in a meeting, I might even dress the same theme colors as that company, just so I feel right. You got to understand the psychology yeah. of marketing as well. That's something I've studied a lot. Psychology of sales, psychology, of everything like, you know, you sit down with someone, you start drinking something, right? You start mimicking their body movements a little bit. They start to adapt to what you do. You got to build rapport in a body language point. You know, if you're doing, you know, direct sale in a cold call type of thing, don't ever pitch yeah. to the, the gatekeeper, you know, find your way in, do your research. That way, when you go to actually build the video content, like, you know, the theme, you know, what their outcome is, you know, what their goal is, you know, their, their, their pains, you know, where they're struggling, you know, and I can look at a business now and I can tell you how they're doing, how they're going to do in a couple of years. I can see the trajectory. I can see what they're doing. And you got the business, some businesses that are like, oh, I don't need to market. Well, no, you do, even though you're doing good. <laughs> and it's, and, and listen, it goes both ways. Like with a company that says, oh, we're doing so good. We don't need to market. That's wrong. But let's go back to the videographer right? You're talking about you're getting zero feedback, right? Like if I get zero feedback, it sucks. So that's why I have my brother with me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, and I say, dude, I, I'm not mm -hmm. interested in anybody telling me, dude, it's so good. Listen, it's yeah. good because I put everything I could into it. I need to know why it's not good. Like the so good doesn't help me evolve. Like it's great. Yeah. But if you stay yeah. in the so good phase, it's just like working out. If every day I'm walking up that hill and it gets easy, I'm not walking anymore. I got to start running. Or I got to put weights on my body because I'm not I'm not doing this to get comfortable. I'm doing this to continuously evolve. So if they're not putting pressure on me, I go somewhere else. And that's one of the biggest factors. If you're a videographer and say you're doing weddings and you're trying to move out of weddings, you got that down. That's cool. Maybe that's your thing. But then go over here to the left to do a nonprofit or do some crazy video or challenge yourself and go in low lighting where you know you cannot film in low lighting and find a way to make it work. You know, yeah. like. Like if you're not challenging yourself to get the shot, if you're not willing to, and that's why I like the glide cam so much because I'm mm. running, I'm physically activating <laughs> my body. And so when you see a video of mine, it's because my physical body has been activated and full of energy. So that yeah. projects the same thing. I've been hired on a lot of things because they found out that I do video, I do the video, I film it and I edit it. So many people, I mean, that's nothing wrong with the team to do with it, but you lose that when you spread that out yeah. Yeah. because I was there. When I come home and I edit that, I know exactly how to add that energy. Plus, if my Absolutely. camera's doing some weird things like the aperture or something or ISO, I know what I can't fix in the camera I could fix in the video. So if you know that, I'm like, oh, I'll just get it slightly close to where it needs to be. And then I'm going to fix it in, in, in editing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I that was one of the biggest things I learned when shooting video was like that I love, right? Because 
like you said, when you film and then you have somebody else edit, like that 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 vision kind of like gets lost. It's kind of like playing that game, uh, the phone. I don't ever know in English. I don't know how do you call it in español. It's telefonito. Sure. Uh, but, <laughs> but you know, it's like it just gets a little bit lost the vision. But it's you should to what you want to edit at the end. I have to send you some pictures of me. You think like I'm a thing. I will make you proud. Um, yeah. But I, I have a a question that has been like eating up inside. You know, you say a lot. Add massive value and. I, I absolutely love that, right? I, I truly believe that is the way, like you said, you know, like Dream 100, but not, not just on a, and I'm not, I don't mean like a Dream 100 is this, but like don't deliver value with just because you're expecting something in return, right? Like just right. deliver value because that's what you really want to do. You're here to serve the other person, re actually help them, right? It has to, know- yeah, it has to go back to the, the manifestation or like the Tao. I follow the Tao a lot. So it's like, it's yeah. like I don't give to receive. And because I don't mm-hmm. give to receive, I just give, I ultimately receive. It's, I'm never thinking about what I get back. I just go, yep. bam, here you go. And I enjoy that process so much that it becomes to the point where everyone just comes to me. And it's, exactly. it's just part of that. You don't have to think, You don't have to go out there and say, I need to go find clients. You focus yeah. on, and I'm going to shout out to my friend, Milan V. Milan V is a guru of mine. Like he's great. Uh, he's, he's an amazing guy. And he told me a long time ago, he said, dude, stop looking everywhere else. Blinders on, look at your camera and what you can do in that camera and add that quality that you want to everyone. And don't think about it. everything will come to you. I'm like, all right. And then once, once I started doing that, everybody came what, to me. What's that? <laughs> wait, wait, because I didn't finish my question. Don't, don't go yet. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, 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 you're good. He, he, We my both. brother is not. <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the dog house. So, so I, I love that, first of all. like Just <laughs> focus so much on your craft and giving without expectations. I do feel a lot of people, me raise my hand, like I've been there a lot. Like Sometimes you're in a situation where you're like, oh my gosh, I want to give value. But at the same time, you're like, I'm looking for something, right? Like I need to put food in my plate, for example. But yeah. the question was going, was going here, right? Because... You hear it too in social media, add value, right? Like go in here and add value. A lot of people are, are use that phrase. So what does adding massive value looks like for you, right? Like for me. Yeah, yeah. for you specifically. Because I know that this can be a somewhat subjective, right? But I think by, by you sharing your opinion, people might have a, a bar, right? A, a measurement mm-hmm. to say, wow, I'm not yeah. adding maybe enough value in the marketplace. I need to do a better effort. Well, at a baseline, at a personal level, you know when you're not putting 110%. So if you're not putting 110%, even in the meeting, before you even pull out a camera, you're not adding the value. You have to go all in. And it also comes down to the fact, for me, adding massive value is knowing that <clears throat> when I deliver something to the client, that it's something that is going to be so next level that I know for a fact that everybody else is going to want to figure this out or model this in some way. I I, when someone says do this, because this looks this way. And I like that. I always turn the other way. I never follow a trend. I try to be the trend center, right? Yes. We don't know how good we had it right until, until years later. Like I, like everything I do now, I mean, I I'm so good in tune with this stuff, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to be on point. But then in a year now, I'm like, Oh wow. I was way ahead of the game. So like, for instance, I've, I have an incredible track record. I've never not doubled, tripled and quadrupled the scale of a business on their investment with me or anybody else. Like I've blown that out of the water and I I've never failed a business. So I'm not saying I won't, but I'm saying it's because I risk everything. So one of the things I would like to speak to the videographers on this quote right here is that, you know, you have to fail a thousand percent, a thousand times behind the camera, behind editing before you deliver that footage to the client. They don't know. They don't know that your computer crashed. They don't know that you didn't get the shot right, or this shot didn't turn out or the audio was crap and you had to go redo it as long as you go through those processes and make sure that it's awesome before you turn it over to a client, you'll, you'll have no little to no feedback from them to go change this, tweak this, if you did your research and you applied yourself. So for me, adding massive value is delivering something to a client and they're going, Oh my gosh, this is great. Now, if they come back and say, can we tweak this? That's fine. You got to be ready for that because it's not that you didn't. It's just, there's so many moving parts in this and you might not see something. So just because no matter how many times I scale up to a different business or a small business, 
you know, I've been working with both, you know, you got your, your mama pop shots and then you got your mm -hmm. huge billion fortune 500, whatever companies. So it's like, when you're, when you're dealing with this, they all have the same thing. Like they're all deal with the same problems, just they move bigger money and yeah. you're generating bigger dollars. So it's the market, it's the reach. So to add massive value, you know that this fits in with their prospects. It's going to deliver what they want. And when, and, and also listen, I've had amazing videos and they've had no team to do it. So you also might have to wear those hats to go, you know what? I can already tell you that when we put this video out, it's going to flop because your team is not ready because you do not have the social media stuff in place. You have not been, uh, you know, you have not been playing the game. You have not yeah. been exciting your clientele. So that's also, you got to know when you switch from brand exposure, like creating the brand and, and getting that brand awareness out there to versus sales and direct sales and direct marketing. You have to know how to do all that. So adding massive values to understand all of that before you step into this and go, I'm ready. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that I love it. Powerful. Preparation is key. I th that is so powerful right there. I feel like a lot of people are now rushing the process and maybe the 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 research that they do, the preparation that they do is like they just like skip through things, right? Mm -hmm. And fun cut fact, corners. Actually, yeah, cut, cutting corners, right? And fun fact, this morning uh, I was preparing, we had a call with one of our clients that now we're helping them uh you know, when they don't have a podcast produced, we're like, dude, don't worry about it. We're going to do the research in your industry, what people are looking, what, what people are, are asking about, right? We're going to set up all the topics. We're going to give you all the headlines. All you got to do is show up because we cannot do the talking for you, right? And the client came in and we started talking and it felt so good being so well prepared. Like, I, I honestly, it's a client that's in the real estate industry, right? And I personally don't have that much knowledge of the real estate industry, but after doing proper research and, you know, like figuring out what is it that people want to learn, it felt so good just showing up and being sure that you're actually over delivering, right? That you're adding massive yes. value <clears throat> to this person. Like it, it feels amazing. And at the end, I actually asked him, like, Hey, so far, do you have any feedback on the process that we've had since you started? Right. And he was like, man, honestly, I, I don't have any feedback. He was like, honestly, I feel like I've, you know, like wasted some of your time. And I was like, no, dude, like this is absolutely amazing. Right. Well, that's um, a good point because, because like, you know, for, for content creators, like if you, if you are an independent person, you're a videographer, whatever, and you got all this down, like you might be focused on commercials, car commercials, whatever. And then someone like real estate might come to you. And that happened to me. Like I was, I have done real estate before, but I got hit with the commercial real estate opportunity. When my commercial mm -hmm. real estate contract came through, I was like, I, I was, I felt so stupid because I was like, so we're filming a house. No, no commercial real estate. Okay. So where's the building? It's not, it's a lot wait what oh we're building on it okay i need you to do a drone because we're going to put some like sit like 3d stuff in here from our design guys i'm like okay so i did the drone and then we start to get the things built because they take this stuff to trade shows and it, it's a huge industry so if you can get into commercial yeah. real estate you're going to grow big but even in in uh, real estate you know i would i look at all the people that they're doing i go let me do something different like everyone gets the camera yeah. was does the walkthrough does the drone shots and they spend too much time on drone shots like drone shots should be <laughs> you know two to five seconds like they're not the whole dang right. video like they yeah you know they need yeah. to be like that's what makes it exciting when you see a shot flow yeah. wait we just saw overshot that's cool like make it cinematic like you know so they do all these videos but a lot of people are shortcutting things and i don't shortcut like i will build it i'll figure it out i'll do something different and it also, you gotta, you gotta find what's good for you. Like I'm a glycam yeah. guy, like it, mm. it's an extension of myself. I don't have to worry about powering it up, but people are using the, you know, the Ronins and all these power mechanical stuff. And, and all I see them is charging all the time and I'm blown by them. It's like, <laughs> dude, just, just get this and figure this out. It also helps that yeah. my father is a blacksmith, you know, so yeah. I know my father's a blacksmith. So he uses the tools to shape these amazing pieces of metal. So growing up, that's all I know. You take a tool and you make it and you master that tool, right? It's not about yeah. being the best at everything, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I love the feeling of carrying a glycam. And I know we're saying this pretty late into, into the show, but if you don't know what a glycam is, is, and I don't really know how to describe it properly. You probably know better, but it's like a contraption, right? Where you put your camera it, it, balance yeah. it with weights so the camera can stay steady as you move and it can be a very smooth ride for yeah, whoever's it's, it's watching. A, it's a, it's a uh, camera stabilizer that helps you so that you don't get, you know, any of that 
crazy shake. So it's without any instability or shake. Yep. It's like, it's all good. You can go up steps and like, it's, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. I, I, it feels I realize, so good. Like I, your I, arm ends up like a tennis player. I, I realized <laughs> that I needed to work out my arms after like two minutes with a glycan. I'm like, this is not for me. Dude, <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's, you know, Fancy did a really good job. Uh, Appreciate it. Thank you. I, yeah. You know, Stevalon, I'll send you one of the videos that I did and you yes, can please. be the judge. I, I would love to have your opinion, you know, <clears throat> rip please, it apart. I, uh, I would love to. All right. So, so I, as, as we wrap up, you know, in the, the, the last few minutes here, it's, we'll transition a, a little bit. I want to transition a little bit to your own publishing. You obviously have yeah. a show. Uh, we'll put mm -hmm. the links right below and we'll, we'll ask you in a second. But what, what was your, do you remember a challenge? When you started publishing yourself, you're like, okay, I've been doing all these videos for this company. Like I've been a creator for a while now. What was your biggest challenge when you started publishing? What it was your voice, especially with the, with the podcast and, and everything that you do. Yeah. I think it came down to really like, am I worthy enough? Right? Like we have that self doubt. Like I got to talk about me now. I got to talk about my successes. And you know, like I had mentioned before, my, my social media following did not grow as much as I thought it would, because before it could grow, I left social media for about two years because the background companies were having me so busy that I was like, why do I need that? And, you know, I'm not a business business per se. I'm a, uh, I'm an icon or some sort or a professional, you know, I, I don't need to be so much in the public, but I find myself in the public a lot. So to speak on these things and create my own courses in my publishing, it was like, can I, do I really have what it takes to share? But I'm like, when you look at everything you did, I had to say, well, let's take all the fluff and hype out of it. So what I did all this stuff for these great people and these big businesses. And I made millions of dollars in the market. Yeah. What about at the core? Where did I start? So I try to remind myself, go back to where you started. You know, when you had one camera, it was easy. When you add two cameras, now you spend 20 minutes trying to figure out which camera angle, what lens you're going to use, what microphone, it gets too complicated. You got to simplify things. And so I started there. I said, you know, if I'm going to reach people, who is my target market, right? So at the very mm -hmm. beginning, it was videographers. I was laying down a blueprint for them to follow. And a lot of them, if they followed it, they would succeed. You know, they'd find their own. And it's about attaching to something and then detaching. So like we attach, I'm going to use mentors, right? We attach to these mentors that we're like, oh, we consume their content so much. But there's a point where you have to consume it, make it your own, do something else with it, and then step away from them. So like when I publish my book, when I publish my courses, I put my blinders on and I go, I got to stop looking at the outside world and I got to figure out what really is here. Like, why did I pick up a camera? Right. Why am I worthy to teach you? I'm worthy to teach you because I stuck with it, not because I was successful, but because I stuck with it. And I found these really cool things that if you shoot and use a camera this way or if you run at this speed and slow down the footage, it's exciting. Yeah. And yeah. you put that in the hands of someone else in a different industry, it'll change the game. And that's what people forget is that you can literally, especially in these times, there's no excuse why you can't be successful right now because we have all this technology. You don't have to leave your room, right? You don't have to leave your house. You can really influence people. You don't have to be a master. You just have to go out there and go, let me do something that is exciting for me. Because at yeah. the end of the day, yeah. who cares about all the money you made or all the accolades you might have accumulated? What really matters is, did you have fun in the process? You want to wake up yeah. one day and find out you're old or you're broken and you wasted life away and you're just like, I should have did this. I overcomplicated that. So that's my thing. Thank you, man. Yeah. Uh, I love that quotable moment, rather. I'm worthy to teach you, not because I was successful, but because I endured. And I think I changed it a little bit, but it was it was pretty good. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make a quote of that. You know, we'll attribute to you. We'll put a good looking picture of you right there and we'll send it to social media. I, uh, I loved and I resonate so much where you mentioned you can't, you learn from these people and then you have to step away and then yeah. make it your own, right? And I feel like I'm going to relate it to our show, right? For us, like yeah. when we started this podcast, right? Or, or the mm -hmm. show or the live show, whatever, right? We looked at many others and we're like, okay, what are some elements that we could potentially do that? But it was very quick. And at the end of the day, it was like, what can we do? Right? Because like the first version of the show was called Bruce and Rose. And that was five episodes that we recorded again with two DSLRs with a timer. So we had to get up and turn them off. And then we had beer on the computer. And then like it was on Fonzie's room and we had this massive light. The setup was like an hour. So we're like, man, like 
we cannot have like a Joe Rogan level podcast in Fonzie's room because we're not prepared. We're not, we're not there. Like yeah. we're like 10 years yeah. behind. So what can we do today? And it has evolved into this thing that is very frictionless for us <clears throat> to go execute very repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And we enjoy doing it. And people are like, we get comments, right? We get people like, why don't you do this? And why don't you, because we don't really want to. Like, because but that's, if we that's, that's the, the gold about it. That people want to start at such a high level. Like, there's exactly. a journey, there's a story that you tell, and and there's a certain prospect of people that would love to to see you at this level. And then as you like, as I put new lights back here, or I get a new signs, like you talk about it, it causes it's, people to want to engage in what you do. If you start at the top, exactly. you're gonna have exactly. this problem that that like I've experienced this problem too. I was making so much noise that people are like, Whoa, man, this guy, I don't even know if I could afford him. So let's not even talk to him. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't care how successful I am. I will talk to a local business or a small nonprofit or anybody else that needs yeah. my help. And I will do whatever I can to serve. And it doesn't always have to be about a monetary gain because that person right there might not have any monetary gain for you, but they might have the exposure you need to reach maybe someone else that you're trying to reach. Absolutely. You never know. I mean, you got to take the risk. You got to enjoy the process, you know? So I love that yeah. concept. And I did start out, you know, I'm still, look at, I'm revamping my podcast. So like, this yeah. is my little area. I'm still building it. It's not I quite love it. Dude. Oh, yeah. it's, I, it's awesome. I love, I love the background by yeah. the way. I, I, I think can't by, wait to see the lights. Woo, baby. I think by bringing people along in the journey with you, they, they relate, right? Like if you just start mm -hmm. looking like you are from at the top, and they try to look back and it's like, oh, who's this guy? And they don't see anything. It's kind of like, oh man, like I, I, you personally don't relate with somebody that always has been perfect, right? Like we need to see those flaws yeah. to actually relate to the person. It's like, oh dude, look, this guy had a horrible looking setup at first, right? Like <laughs> the two brothers were well, sitting. And, and don't, and don't know. get, yeah, and don't yeah, right. get like caught up with um, like you might, someone might call on you that's like really big. Like maybe you look up to them and you're like, whoa don't get nervous like just yep. focus like i got this and like listen to what they're calling yep. on because listen you're you're trying to go beyond that goal right i've been at the mm -hmm. top and been lonely and felt that feeling of like wow i thought all this money all the success would make me so happy and i'm like but, but i'm not and i realized mm -hmm. like i have to learn to be happy without all of this like what yeah. is at my core like why am i doing it? and it comes with the creation process that's my zone so i never leave that zone right i never go yeah. outside my little bubble of like you know, who's my ideal prospect. If, if they're not on the same drum with me, I'm not working with them. Like I don't, I'm not interested in, in doing everybody's video. I'm right now. I'm interested in doing the video, like the video to, to now, now it's about laying my mark. It's not about like, Oh, I've done all this excitement. It's like, now it's like, when you see a video, like that's, I know who did that. Right. And, exactly. and the other thing is, it's like, just to be happy about all this is when you work with all these different people, like I've worked with, you know, like, a crazy amount of people you have to look at the list but you know even just in the <laughs> entertainment business you're just yeah. like wait a minute i'm working with like this singer that i like listen to all the time I'm like wow but then you you got to go beyond that you got to yeah. deliver because yeah. they're they're paying you to go to that like for me it's not yeah. just a videographer anymore it's a strategist so you know yeah. i might be like hey you know like certain people climb up on scaffolding like why don't we build a cool stage so you don't have to climb up on that scaffolding okay who do i talk yeah. to you know what i'm saying like Yep. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I love yeah. it. Now you're the expert in their eyes, right? You're changing yeah. roles. They're like, yeah. now you're listening to them and now they're listening to you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been brought into crazy companies that I'm like, what am I doing here? Like, this is weird. Like, okay. You know, like maybe it's yeah. dog food or something. And I'm like, yeah, actually that would look really cool. Like we should do that. And they're like, thank you. I'm like, glad I can help. You yeah. know what I mean? And, but that's, oh, yeah. that's where the, the checks come, you know? I love it. Dude. This has been awesome. I have yep. two last quick questions. Yeah, man. Favorite questions. Number one is what is an action point that somebody, you know, starting to publish, maybe they're in the video world, right? Like what is something that they can do today to continue to move forward, right? Gain, gain momentum. Write the book, right? Just start writing. Uh, if it's a podcast, start writing the podcast, creating the graphics, buy the first piece of equipment. When you commit to something on a financial level or even just an effort level, you'll follow through. So go buy that camera. Maybe, maybe I'm not saying everyone gets in debt, but I'm saying go spend the money on that or start with yeah. a small camera, right? Or a microphone. Let's shout out the Rode mics. They overnighted this because my yeah, mic broke. So Rode, thank you, Rode. Um, thank you, Rode. Go find, yeah, go find the quality you want and commit. Just it's the same thing as like, you know, getting in shape. If you want to get in shape, what do you got to do? You got to just, if you can't do 25 push ups today, do one. 
do something every single day that moves yeah. you towards that goal. So like if I was starting out wanting to do a podcast, I would start just going live on my YouTube channel and I would start, even if I don't have the right mics and I'm just using the camera lens, I'm like, guys, I'm going to do this podcast because you're going to mess up so many times before the people come. And that's fine. That's a dress rehearsal. So yeah. just go do it. Let's go do it, man. Ah, oh, so I, good. I love that. Financial commitment leads to action. Uh, quick, quick story. Yeah, that's what happened to us with the podcast. We yeah. bought this whole equipment and then it's like, guess what? We got to use it now. <laughs> <laughs> we got a, a year later. We're like, crap, that's the thing. Like Katie's like, what's that thing in the closet? Oh man. Yeah. We spent a bunch of money on that. Let's use yeah. it. Yeah, I found uh, that. <laughs> Dude, where, where can people find you? Where can people connect with you? I know that you're revamping the show. Was it new? Yeah. Like, where, where can we go? Yeah, so um, my show um, is now called Think Like a Strategist, and you can find that on Apple Podcasts. But if you want to just go to, to find everything about me, you would go to zebulinthomas.com. And um, when you go there, you could find me on all the platforms that I'm on. And um, if anybody wants to really communicate with me, the number one platform that you can find me on actually get me on is going to be Instagram. I love that. It's very quick and easy. Um, but anywhere else I might be a little bit of a ghost. Awesome. Where, where would you be if you never started publishing? I'm curious. Ooh, if I never started publishing, um, I, I, nowhere. I, I, that's the only place I would be like, like I, I can't say that I wouldn't have started publishing. Um, Damn, that's I've never been thrown off by a question. That is a great <laughs> question. Um, I love that question because no one's asked me the question that really <laughs> threw me off. Where would I be if I never started publishing? Dude, I don't know. I've been an entrepreneur since I was like 16. Like I lived on my own since I was 16. So that's a good question. Um, I'll leave it for, for part two. Yeah, homework. Please. Homework. Please do <laughs> I do, I do want to say one thing. I gotta say this because um I recently just um, created and produced a new podcast for CHI and Amanda Holmes. It's called the CEO Mastery Podcast. It's so good, by the way. It's so good. <laughs> it is heavy yeah. hitting, very detail oriented, really good for business. And with that yeah. being said, if you would like to know one of the biggest challenges that might be holding you back in your business that'll help you over the next 12 months, take the quiz. And this is where I'm going to plug. Take the quiz. If you're a business owner, take the quiz at how to double sales.com take it it's so good by the way like i'm gonna listen like we'll leave all the links uh, thank you thank you man so, so we we love you guys we love you we love amanda like everything that you guys thank are you. right there um yeah and, just so you know that moment where we're eating at us together is a special yes, moment for yes us. It, it was so, so good. good it's like seriously it's dear to my heart <laughs> i love that it, it was so such a good time it was the best time to meet you guys like it was so good I know, it was I know. perfect. And we had the whole restaurant for ourselves too. That was perfect. That was so nice. Perfect serendipity. That's uh, yeah. what I call it's, it. It's like we run to the place on pro no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's like ultimate dream 100 strategy. By the way, no, like it was completely like natural, honestly. Organic. So, it organic. So was. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much, man. We're gonna leave all the links right below. The yeah. conversation was so fun. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we head out? Um, I would say just go out there to anybody watching this, listening, whether you're a business owner or a videographer or content creator, and you see this, just go out there and do you just don't try to be a copy. Just be the best that you can be because you are going to change the game. And if it's not happening for you right now, just know that the industry and the world is changing so rapidly at some point, it's going to shift in your favor. So build your little gold nugget over here, even though it doesn't fit in with society or the market right here. And when that opportunity happens, like, co, you know, I won't say it, a quarantine, right, or something that slows down the world, a recession, right, that gold nugget is going to go here and it's going to help a lot of people. So just be patient. Long term game. Wow, so good. Love Fancy. it, man. Anything no, else? I just want to say thank you. Appreciate it, Sebel. And yeah, this was, uh, uh, was amazing. I had a lot of fun yeah. and can't wait for part two. That's why I'm going to leave right there. I know you got homework, part two. Uh, with that said, <laughs> yes. guys, thank you so much for tuning to the Contest Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show and on social media at Beast Bros. Go. That is right. And if Sebel on here help you move one step closer to your goal, please don't forget to share this episode with three friends and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys.